Okay, so you're probably thinking, what the heck is going on with this current market right now? The companies that I have high conviction over are reporting incredible numbers, but they have gone nowhere. Or even worse, they've gone lower. So for example, AMD, okay, they had an insane Q4, okay? They reported their Q4 earnings in January. And since January, what has the share price done? It's only continued lower. And they recently came out with Q1 earnings, okay? And look what happened after they reported earnings. You would think they had terrible earnings, but believe you me, they absolutely destroyed earnings. I, I, I did a review of AMD's earnings. I was completely blown away by their earnings. But look, after we reported fantastic earnings, we have had nothing but three red days in a row. What is going on? Okay, another company, Apple, right? Apple reported a blowout Q4 uh, back in January again. But look at what it's done. It's gone nowhere but down since reporting amazing earnings okay it's been on a horrible downtrend right now dropping from a high of 142 dollars a share all the way down to lows of 116 dollars a share what, what is going on and then look at it okay so apple recently came out with earnings again on the 28th so just a couple of days ago and look at what the share price has done since then it's produced two giant red days as a result of reporting fantastic earnings. I'll give you another example, Tesla, okay? Tesla, people can debate all you want about Tesla's earnings, but the fact is top line grew, uh, bottom line grew, and also delivery numbers grew. So make of it what you want. But essentially, their Q4 again was phenomenal. And look at what they've done since Q4. They've gone nowhere but down. Okay, they went from highs of $900 a share all the way $539 a share. And look at where we are now. So we reported earnings again this week and we have been going nowhere but down. Okay, great companies, great businesses are absolutely smashing their earnings, but they've only been going in one direction and that has been down. So this, of course, is now becoming frustrating. I'm seeing investors online talking about quitting, um, you know, giving up, investing's not for you. However, before you reach that decision, I've got a perfectly normal explanation, okay? This has happened many times in the past and I was reading Peter Lynch's Beat in the Street again. I've read that, but that book is like almost becoming like my Bible, okay? And I'm going to share with you some of the information because I think that will give some clarity to what is going on in the market right now, uh, what we can expect going forward for the rest of this year and maybe into next year and what I plan to do in this current stock market climate. So before we dive into it, if you gain any value from this video, please make sure you smash the like button. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to stay up to date with all of my latest video content. So that said, let's dive into it. Okay, so this is from chapter seven of Be In The Street. This is the book here, Be In The Street. The link to this book, if you're interested, is in the description below. It is an affiliate link, but you will be helping your boy out. But okay, so the chapter is in chapter seven. And this part of the chapter is titled The Overpriced Market, okay? So I've highlighted a few points. Uh, Peter Lynch was talking about a 300 gain in the Dow in three weeks. He was almost depressed. You know, Peter Lynch is one of those guys that he loves buying when the stock prices are low. He loves buying stocks when the market has been beaten down in a recession. That's his favorite time to buy. But that doesn't explain what's going on, okay? The second part of the chapter explains what is going on right now, in my opinion, okay? So it says, stocks that are priced higher than the earnings lines have a regular habit of moving sideways, aka taking a breather or falling in price until they are brought back to more reasonable valuations. Growth stocks that were the champions of 1991 would do nothing or go sideways in 1992, even in a good market, all right? And in a bad market, so in a bearish market, they could suffer 30% declines. So what can we learn from this paragraph? The moment stocks become overpriced or they escape their normal valuations, then there's going to be a period which Peter Lynch coined taking a breather, whereby the stocks, no matter how good earnings are, because the share price is already overvalued, then they'll either consolidate slash move sideways or even worse, the stocks can fall, okay? Regardless of how incredible the company performed, because the overall market is overvalued, even the share price of the, your favorite company might be overvalued in comparison to its PE ratio, then the expectation 
according to history and according to what happened in 1992 is that you can expect consolidation or the price will fall and again it's got nothing to do with the performance of the business it's just the overall valuations have escaped reality and now let me prove this to you okay let's take a look at the s p 500 ratio so this is the s p 500 pe ratio so peter lynch has said multiple times in his text he believes that the normal range for the pe ratio should be between 10 and 20 but recently, new analysts have come out and they say they believe since the turn of the century that the normal range should be between 20 and 30. So let's say for argument's sake, yes, between 20 and 30. And to be fair, those ranges have stood firm since the year 1990 all the way to where we are in 2020. But look at where we are, okay? The last time we escaped those ranges of 20 and 30 was around, this was around the dot-com area. And we all know what happened during the dot-com boom we saw prices collapse. That's because the valuations escaped the normal ranges. Then valuations went absolutely crazy after the dot-com bubble. Then we all know 2008 led to the financial crisis and then prices completely collapsed back into normal range. Pretty much since 2010, the PE ratio was about 15. It was on a beautiful uptrend and you know, between 2010 and 2020, that's been phrased as one of the best bull runs. And you can see why, because the valuations of stocks back then were trading within normal range. Now, fast forward to where we are in 2021 and look at where we are we are at 42.57 we are way above normal valuations and as peter lynch says as soon as this happens we can expect stocks to trade sideways or stocks to trade lower until valuations start to normalize and i think that's exactly what we're going to see for the rest of this year and this process has already started because we're currently at 42.57 but I took a screenshot last week, so before earnings began, and this is where we were last week. So we were at 42.88. So as you can see, the PE ratio is starting to work its way downwards as stocks begin to consolidate or move lower. That will cause the PE ratios to begin to reduce and then eventually stocks will return back to normal valuations. And if you want further confirmation of this, again, let's zoom out. This is AMD's charts, okay? So AMD have reported great earnings, but look at what the share price has done since July. It's been consolidating for months now. Despite beating the previous quarter, you know, year on year growth, the company has done phenomenal, but the share price has only consolidated. It's been range bound. It's been moving sideways since July. If we look at Apple, Apple's another great example, had fantastic earnings, has been killing it, iPhone sales through the roof. But look at us. The share price has gone nowhere but sideways since, since, since August. It's been trading sideways since August. If we look at Tesla, Tesla had a great 2020. We've been trading sideways since we hit our highs back in January. And that's just been the story. Regardless of delivery numbers, regardless of earnings, we're going to continue to trade sideways. Amazon's another brilliant company. They reported fantastic earnings quarter after quarter after quarter. But if you look at the share price, pretty much since July, it's gone nowhere but sideways, it's just gone sideways. And this is exactly what Peter Lynch was talking about, whereby the market has become overvalued and stocks will begin to move sideways. And this is just a breather period, okay? So now that we know that, let's take a look at the S&P 500 back in the day, okay? So, so in 1991, the S&P had an incredible run, okay? From 1991 to the beginning of 1992, let's bring it up, the S&P rose 27 percent you can liken this period to maybe the year 2020 because we had a phenomenal run in 2020 but take a look at 1992 to 1993 right before it turned to 1993 and continued on this uptrend look at what happened to the s p 500 it went sideways it consolidated for a whole year okay this is not a couple of days or a couple of weeks it set new highs early 1992 and just consolidated for a whole year before eventually in 1993 you can see the share price broke out of this range and then continued higher into 1994 and the rest is history okay then it had this massive boom in 1995 and continued higher and we are where we are remember past performance is not predictive of future performance okay it, we all know that one thing that we do know is that the past leaves clues for the future and if this happened in 1992 and 1993 during an overvalued market and stocks and stocks traded sideways or even lower regardless of earnings then 
In my opinion, that's what I expect to happen right now until the PE ratio returns back to normal levels. What will I be doing in the meantime? I'm going to continue investing, okay? Because as you saw on the S&P 500, as soon as it turned to 1993 uh, and it broke out of that range, prices continued higher and the rest is history. So my unqualified advice, because I'm not a financial advisor, is to just stick with it, okay? Understand the game. Understand that your high conviction stocks are prob is probably going to trade sideways or better yet, the share price might actually trade lower, meaning you can buy it even cheaper, which is the best case scenario, unless you don't believe in the company long term. So before you decide to quit on the market overall, think about what I've shared in this video today. I think if you're a long term investor and the share prices of your favorite high conviction stocks drops lower, then that's great. You can buy more before eventually valuations normalize and then we continue higher. But if you're in the market for short term gains, then I'm afraid it's not going to be a good time for you. And probably your best bet is to jump on the crypto bull run right now but even the crypto bull run you've got to be careful because every bull run comes to an end there's a reason why we have bull and bear markets okay so before you run along to the next shiny object think about it okay think about your investments think about what you're doing think about your long-term aspiration and your long-term goals and once you've thought about all of that then you can make a more informed decision so that's my expectations that's my plan i'm going to continue investing in companies that i believe in because i'm in it for the long term but let me know in the comment section below what you plan to do so that's all i have for you in this video thank you so much for watching if you want to join my discord you can do so by clicking the patreon link in the description below but with all that said thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next one peace